My brothers and sisters, as we see what is going on around us all the time, we face so many challenges as human beings in a world that is not perfect. We are in fact not perfect. Perfection belongs only and solely to Allah. Allah is the perfect. This is why those who want to be perfect or want others to be perfect completely, at times they trample on the toes of others and make their lives a misery. So understand you are not perfect, nor am I. Nothing besides Allah is absolutely perfect. The closest example to perfection is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a prophet of Allah, he was granted that level of perfection that no other was granted because he was chosen to be the greatest of all, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we send blessings and salutations upon him and all the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will notice across the globe a lot happening that will sadden you. It saddens all of us. We see negativity. In fact, it comes so close that we see negativity in our own homes. We have situations whereby we have disagreements with our children, with our parents, with our siblings, with our spouses, yet we love them so much. We have these disagreements whereby life sometimes becomes a misery. And at times the person causing this could be a loved one doing it with a good intention, not knowing the amount of damage and harm he or she may be causing to the other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those who lose the consciousness of what impact our words and statements have on those we interact with. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that having been said, you and I know that part of not being perfect is that we will falter and sin now and again. None of us can claim that he or she has no sin because again, we're not perfect. Kullu bani Adam khatta. The Prophet peace be upon him says, all humankind will make mistakes, they will sin, they will err. وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ And the best of those who err and who make mistakes are those who constantly seek forgiveness. So all of us, to know our value, we need to ask ourselves, how much do I seek forgiveness of the Almighty? How often do I seek the forgiveness of the Almighty? The answer of that will determine your closeness or distance from the Almighty. Never look at another and think that you are holier than them or more pious because you never know what the next step in your life is holding for you and what the next step for them is holding. Yours could drop you into a pit and theirs could be a staircase leading them to heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and forgiveness. I want to share with you today on this beautiful day at such a beautiful time with such a lovely house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're in with so much of tranquility and peace with the love that we have for one another irrespective of our races irrespective of our financial standing irrespective of so many other factors look at us seated here let's listen to something beautiful the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us, and this is a narration narrated by one of his companions who was with him for a long time, known as Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu an. May Allah be pleased with him. He says, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, that Allah Almighty has said. Now this is something powerful because usually you would hear verses of the Quran. Yes, indeed, that's the most powerful. That's the word of Allah. You can recite that in your prayer. When it comes to the hadith or the statement of the Prophet, the Prophet peace be upon him. If we were told the Prophet peace be upon him said, it is a powerful statement indeed. But for him to say Allah has said, 
it raises it one level higher, one notch higher, and it's now termed Hadith Qudsi, which means, listen up everyone, this is what Allah is telling you. So a lot of people look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think that He is merciless. They think that He is only punishing people. He is only interested in casting people in hellfire. He is only interested in making people's lives difficult, etc., etc. But in actual fact, that is totally wrong. That is the trap of the devil who wants you to think that Allah is void of mercy. Yet the whole religion is based on mercy. Such mercy that nobody can compete with. If I were to do something bad to you, perhaps you might forgive me. If I were to repeat it a second time and say, I'm sorry, you will forgive me a second. The minute you see me do the same thing three times in a short space of time, and I say, I'm sorry, the third time, even if I'm your son, it will change in your attitude a little bit with the Almighty. The more you seek forgiveness, the more He loves you. Subhanallah. The more He loves you. In fact, at the third time that you seek forgiveness, he tells his angels, Oh my angels, do you see this person? Each time he sins, he's asking me for forgiveness, confirming that he firmly believes that I am the owner of forgiveness. I want you all, my beloved angels, to bear witness that I've forgiven him totally. Subhanallah. So why do we lose hope in the mercy of Allah? Why do we look at others and think that they, they do not deserve the mercy of Allah when Allah created you and created them in the same way? If Allah did not want to be merciful upon them, He would not have created them in the first place. So understand, one is to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. The other is to think that others don't deserve the mercy of Allah. Both of those are wrong. And the third is to discourage people, making them feel that they are unwanted by Allah. No matter what you've done, my brothers and sisters, let's listen to this hadith. Let me start it off. Allah says, Ya bna Adama, O son of Adam. That means, O mankind, because we are sons and children of Adam. O mankind. Now I'm listening all ears. I want to know what Allah is telling me, right? Subhanallah, O son of Adam, for as long as you call out to me, for as long as you are calling out to me, continue calling out to me, and for as long as you have hope in me, I will forgive all the sins you've committed and I won't even bother. Subhanallah. This hadith is found in Sunan At-Tirmidhi. Powerful narration. We need to know it. Ya bna Adama, O son of Adam, O mankind, for as long as you're calling out to me, me alone, and for as long as you have hope in my mercy and you have hope in me, I will forgive you whatever is coming from you. I'm going to forgive it. Wala ubali, and I don't mind. I am not bothered. I'm not going to lose anything. I'm not going to gain anything. It's you who's going to gain. I'm going to give you from my mercy. Subhanallah.